What's up guys, welcome to a new update on this beautiful Sunday and we're going to discuss everything surrounding USD, USDT and Luna and the future of stablecoins as this week has been a crazy week in the crypto space. We've had a massive amount of volatility. We've seen something incredible which I've not been experiencing in, in my entire period in crypto. That's what we're going to do, to do today. But make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I'm posting daily content on the markets. And also make sure to like this YouTube update if you enjoy the content. So this week was the week of Luna and one of the biggest collapses ever in the crypto space. The fall of Luna, once a top 10 cryptocurrency and its USD stablecoin has shocked the market. I think that there is a big group of people that have been losing a ton of money too. Um, and also almost all cryptocurrencies have been crashing down south. The question is right now is how could something like this ever happen? And what can we further expect from the stablecoins out of this event? Or what can we expect in general out of this event? That's what we're going to discuss. And first, how did Luna and UST work actually? The mechanics of Luna and UST are quite complicated, but I will try to summarize how it is meant to work. The Terra blockchain uses Luna to pay for transactions taking to secure the network and for governance purposes. This is the same as E does for Ethereum and AVAX for Avalanche. Something different, however, is that the Terra blockchain focuses on native algorithmic stablecoins. The biggest of three, these stablecoins is USD, US Terra, whose value is supposed to equal the US dollar, which we know from the offline world. Traditional stablecoins as the USDT and USDC are packed to the dollar as the companies that issue these tokens have collateral to ensure that these tokens are packed to the dollar as they can be redeemed for the underlying collateral on a one, on a one dollar one dollar is one USDT basis but more on this later so USD is an algorithmic stablecoin that is closely tied to the U, to the Luna token as shown in the diagram that you can see uh, in the screen, the dollar pack was ensured by the minting and burning of Luna when the price of USD deviated from $1. If USD would trade above pack, users could burn $1 of Luna to mint one USD and sell this newly minted USD on the open market and profit from the difference. This contacts the circulating supply of Luna as Luna was burned. When demand for USD grew more and more over the last couple of months, more Luna bus burned through this mechanism to mint USD, which was the big reason why Luna had a massive price surge. Increased demand, decreased supply. Very simple. Now, what happened when USD would trade below its $1 pack? Well, users could burn one USD to mint $1 worth of Luna and sell this Luna on the open market for profit. This in turn contracts the circulating supply of USD and would stabilize the price of USD pack back to its pack. This burning and minting mechanism is in theory made it profitable for anyone to perform arbitrage and profit, which in turn ensured its $1 pack. But we've got Anchor Protocol with unsustainable growth. And here's why. This stable coin mechanism worked quite well until it didn't, of course. Before we dive into exactly what went wrong, um, it's important to understand Anchor Protocol, a savings protocol on Terra, as Anchor played a key role in the boom and bust of Luna. Anchor had a very easy to use interface and offered a great yield for anyone looking to deposit their USD on the platform. Users could buy USD and deposit their USD in Anchor and earn this rate, which is what most people did. Users could also deposit liquid staked assets such as B Luna as collateral to then borrow more USD against their collateral. What many then proceeded to do was use the borrowed USD to buy even more B Luna and repeat the process. This created a lot of leverage in the system, which later also played a role in the fast crash of Luna. The problem with Anchor was that the high yield of 90.5% for USD deposits could be sustained through the borrowed API paid by borrowers. Looking at this chart, the green line is the deposits and the black line is the borrowed assets. Terraform Labs and Anchor 
knew this rate was not sustainable and therefore subsidized this 19.5% rate through a yield reserve a pool of UST used to pay depositors. This yield reserve was nearly emptied on multiple occasions but was stopped up every time. Meanwhile, the word about the high anchor API started spreading and everyone wanted a piece of the cake, so UST's market cap grew at a very high rate. At its peak, UST's market cap nearly hit $19 billion. The problem was that other than earning the 19.5% yield through Anchor, the stablecoin did not have much other demand. Most of the UST supply was staked in Anchor. As explained before, increased demand for UST meant Luna had to be burned, reducing the Luna supply and increasing the price. This explains why Luna experienced a price surge and a huge one. Now let's start talking about the actual collapse as we've just discussed what Terra Luna is and what UST is and how the actual system works or the actual mechanism behind UST is working. We can dive into how and why it all went wrong. During Luna's uptrend everything was great. Users could leverage their Luna positions on Anchor and increase demand UST burned more Luna which in turn caused the price of Luna to rise even more. At a certain point however the market turned. The war crypto market took a huge hit and all tokens experienced double digit negative returns. There were already some concerns about UST breaking its dollar pack and the ripple effect it could have across crypto. Just before the collapse uh, uh, of UST there was almost 19 billion USD in circulation with around 14 billion deposited in Anchor taking the yield not being used for payments, transactions or any other productive activities. If UST were to lose its dollar pack and the depositors were to exit their position then this would cause a bank run and more downside for UST. The supply has to be absorbed by someone and if UST would not hold its one dollar pack then it could be disastrous for the Luna. Terraform Labs were aware of the unsustainable anchor yield and therefore set up Luna Foundation Guard, a non-profit organization solely dedicated to ensuring the pack of UST. This guard raised billions of dollars and used that money to buy Bitcoin in a fund, the Bitcoin Reserve Forex. This fund acts as the final barrier when the stablecoin is in an extreme situation and falls below $1.89. In that case, the Bitcoin is sold for UST instead of Luna being minted in order to reduce the supply of UST on the market. Over the last weekend, panic started to spread within the crypto space. Um, both Bitcoin and the stock markets were correcting heavily, bringing down altcoins too. People were arguing that there could be a bank run once confidence was lost in UST and anchor depositors would try to exit their positions at all at the same time. Well, this is exactly what happened and already over 50% of the deposit stables on Anchor left the platform. These stable coins were then sold for other digital assets, causing a discrepancy between supply and demand and ultimately bringing UST below the fixed value of a dollar. It even went as far as 60 cents the, uh, and on central exchanges because of the selling, lack of trust and the stabilizing factors not being able to keep up with the market. And the the currency rate went even lower, but during that weekend we went down to 60 cents. The stabilizing factors would arbitrage by minting Luna and taking UST out of circulation. However, but because Luna was decreasing rapidly in value itself, this was not worth it. As UST initially lost its pack, the LVG, which is the guard, was forced to use their Bitcoin reserves to act as a safety barrier. There are not many details available on how much has been used because their holdings were transferred to central exchanges and market makers. It was a little too late as UST is still struggling on to maintain its pack and is still trading below 90 cents. The longer the deep pack went on, the more the market lost confidence on Terraform's ability to fix the problem. Luna started its debt spiral towards zero dollars as Luna was printed into hyperinflation to save the pack. It slowly became clear that UST would also suffer as Luna could no longer recover the pack, having lost most of its value. Binance and other exchanges started to delist Luna and UST pairs and eventually the Terra blockchain was halted so bad actors could not pass malicious governance proposals after buying up newly minted Luna at rock bottom prices. This chain is currently producing blocks again but on-chain swaps are turned off. 
People can only use Terra for bridging their BET towards Ethereum or similar things. Now we also got a different topic, which is the USD Tether FUD, which was experienced after the actual collapse of USD. Bitcoin and Ethereum were also joined in the bloodbath of uh, USD as it started to crash quite heavily and Bitcoin dropped towards 25k on uh, USD pairs and Ethereum even towards $1700. Soon everyone else seemed to notice that USDT was no longer trading at a dollar relative to other stable coins such as USD or BUSD. Uh, coins priced to USDT were trading higher as a result. This is also what we have been seeing with USD. We've had uh, massive all-time highs in Bitcoin and ETH values against USD. However, that is not relative. That's not the actual price. It's just because of the depacking. People were starting to get worried about USDT. Um, if it could be completely depacking from the dollar just like UST did. It was peak panic in the markets and everything was crashing. In times like these, everything is an overreaction, including the fear of UCT depacking. And what you can actually see is that it's a shock effect towards other stable coins. So those get the shock from the actual impact of UST. And all of a sudden, so many transactions are being done resulting into the case that there is also a deep packing with USDT, which happens over time, especially during high volatility. USDT is fundamentally different than USD. As mentioned before, USD is an algorithmic stablecoin, while USDT is a collateralized stablecoin. The difference is that whilst USD's, uh, USD's $1 pack was insured through arbitrage on Luna, USDT's $1 pack is insured through redemption one UCT is $1 on the Tether website, the company behind UCT. UCT was under a lot of stress during the crash, as many users on exchanges were using UCT to cash out their coins because of the impact of UST. UCT has traded away from its $1 pack for a short amount of extra pressure in the past, but has always returned towards its $1 pack. However, users who just experienced UST collapsing were scared the same thing could be happening to UCT. So some started selling their USDT towards other stablecoins such as USDC and BUSD. This caused the USDT price to drop below a dollar, which further exacerbated the prayer people had of DPEG. This led to more people rushing to other stablecoins, causing the price of USDT to drop below uh, even 0.95 for a little bit. That a CTO was quick to tweet that UCT is indeed backed one to one and redemptions can be handled without an issue to bid uh, in a bit to minimize panic. Tether FUD happens and it happens over and over again as the Tether company has been vague about the, re uh, the reserves that they actually have. The uncertainty regarding UCT was around the question of whether the company was in the custody of enough capital for every UCT in circulation. According to the Tether website, the reserves are broken down as follows, as you can see in the screen. Commercial paper and certi certificates of deposit, which is worth about 30% of the total reserves, are the only uncertainty as it's not discussed with the public which ones these are ex exactly. However, this means it is a massive amount of UCT would have to be redeemed, redeemed before it even has to touch this. It seems unlikely that people would panic so much that this will happen and it's still just speculation. That said, the company could be more transparent about its exact holdings. So let's discuss some other, other stable coins at this point, as we do have more next to USD and USDT. The original question is, should I swap my USDT towards another safer stable coin? Let's look at how the different stable coins differ. For starters, USDC has a better reputation than USDT as the company behind it, Circle is more transparent. Circle is a US-based company registered in Boston. The company claims that USDC is fully backed by cash and short-dated US government obligations so that it's always redeemable one-to-one -one for US dollars. Each month, Circle publishes attestation reports by Grant Thornton regarding the reserve balances backing USDC. Circle is a licensed money transmitter in 46 US states, plus Washington DC and Puerto Rico. The most recent reserve account report can be seen on the screen. Due to its transparency, USDC may be a safer alternative to USDT, although it's not as established as USDT, meaning not all coins can be traded directly through USDC pairs, plus trading volume and liquidity lacks 
when compared to USDT. Then we also have BUSD, which is the stablecoin of Binance, which is actually a rebranded version of the Paxos stablecoin USDP. BUSD is one-to-one -one backed with USDs, uh, USDs with approval from the New York State Department of Financial Services. Let's conclude. As we have learned from the USD drama, algorithmic stablecoins remain an experience, experience, with most of them have failed to due to the fact that they are not backed by any real assets, but rather derive their value from other volatile assets with a few other use cases. USD's packing, the USDT's packing returned as uh, as projected, and the Fed will likely fade away. However. Constantly, people will still be talking about the collapse of USDT. However, if you look at it, there were some shock effects and we have been experiencing them on and on. And USDT is still surviving. USDC is also surviving and BUSD is doing the exact same. That is, lack of transparency may make other coins such as USDC and BUSD more favorable to hold. Diversification is something that you could be doing and just have it in several stable coins to avoid the excessive risk of having everything into one basket. However, the uncertainties on the markets regarding the stable coins are not justified as UST is completely different than the other assets in the markets. Tomorrow I'll be back with a new update on the markets and I think that we're gonna go see some more of large momentum. Stay tuned, make sure that you subscribe beneath. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Don't do stupid shit and I'll see you again tomorrow.